Hi everybody, welcome to The Kingdom Live, coming to you live on Thursday afternoon. And joining me today is Managing Director of The Kingdom, Adam Steinhardt, coming in from Side Stage. Hi, Side Stage and friends, family, uh, listeners. <laughs> friends and family. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about something um, which is a little bit controversial. We, we tend to get asked this question quite often when we're meeting with clients, um, both new clients and existing clients. And it's a, an area I think that um, people kind of fall into it and don't really do it properly. So yeah. there's a, a great deal of strategy behind it. Um, it's Facebook paid advertising. So to kick it off, Adam, can you give us a, a bit of an overview of, of what it is and I guess how it branches out because there's so many different aspects of it and how it can affect people. Absolutely, thanks Anne. So Facebook paid advertising. Now it's been pretty relevant over the last four years since the organic reach of Facebook was shut down. Well not shut down, but reduced from the good old days of Facebook, maybe eight years ago when mm. whatever you wrote on your timeline, your newsfeed went up. But now it's very much a case of pay to play. And so the algorithm of Facebook if it was going to put all the things that, you, that was actually part of your community up on the news feed, it would actually be thousands of posts per day. Yeah. So, you know, Facebook had to do something. And so what they did is, you know, introduce this pay model. So now if you want to get your posts out to the world, then you do need to actually invest some money into it. And there's plenty of ways to do this. And this is the catch. The, the very obvious way, which a lot of our customers do, is to boost posts. And so that's a simple way to get things out there on Facebook. Boosting your post, the button's right there, the story, the, you create your post, press the boost post button, and out it goes to the world. And so that's the easiest way. But that being the easiest way is also perhaps not the most effective way. Sure. So one of the things that's built into to Facebook, and it's kind of up the left-hand side uh, of your page, is the Ads Manager. And this is where it gets pretty complicated, but super powerful, and in particular, when you go into the next bit of the application, which is the power editor, and that's really powerful. And so this is where you can- Actually named. Yeah, the powerful power editor. <laughs> so so you, this is where it really starts to get you know, significant in terms of what you can do. And I guess the first bit of homework for listeners, because they love homework, is to actually check it out. Yeah. Avoid the boost post button. So name the boost post. Yes, and have a look at the ads manager. Yeah. Now, what makes the Ads Manager special? Well, first of all, you're able to target very specific uh, demographics that are part of the Facebook uh, Open Graph demographic setup. So what that means is I can pick male or female, for example. I can pick radiuses. So if we're talking, let's say, Adelaide, where we are, we can advertise to anybody within an X, 10, 15, 25 kilometer radius. Mm. And so that's really powerful if you're a local business that's trying to attract local customers. There's no point advertising to the greater part of the state, the city, the country, or the world for that matter, when you can zero down on a particular area. Yep. So this is where it all happens in the back end of the ads manager. Okay, cool. So um, what should people be putting in these ads? Like boosting posts is obviously a bad idea, so w what would you put? Yeah, look, I think it's an interesting comment. Boosting posts at the moment feels like a bad idea, but the only reason why we know that is because we try a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we'll try boosting posts, we'll try the various two uh, assets that are in the back end of, of Facebook. But one of the things that's really important to understand is the difference between liking a page and a post versus actually clicking on a link to get to your website. So from a business perspective, we would always recommend, without exception, that you always have a trackable link back to your website. Mm -hmm. That's super important. So we obviously we use HubSpot. HubSpot allows us to have a link that is actually tracked to a campaign and a link that same link is tracked to analytics so we can tell exactly what is occurring when somebody clicks on that link. And what's really interesting about this and, for, and because of HubSpot we, we actually saw these stats is that Facebook is super powerful for getting clicks back to your website yeah. without necessarily getting any likes yeah. or any attention from that perspective. So, you know, we might see a post that has one or two likes only, but it might generate 10 to 15 clicks back to our website. Yeah. And I know you've seen that with a lot of customers. Oh, absolutely. Those analytics were quite startling, to be completely honest with you. And it gives us a really good gauge then of what's resonating with viewers or users, Facebook users, 
Um, and so when we see something that's worked really well, I mean, the obvious, this obvious thing is to go and recreate it and do it again. So repurposing that same content, putting a different spin on it, maybe changing the image, but again, pushing it out further and trying to reach more people. Yeah, and this is where the ads manager starts coming into its own. Once you have a post that is, in, is getting engagement, then that's where you start throwing money at it uh, because you know it's working. And so as a result, in the ads manager, you can actually add images, including up to six or seven in the gallery. You can add video. Yep. Uh, you can expand the text that you're putting in there. And also you can pick audiences, which is another really powerful thing about Facebook, is that you're able to promote your uh, posts to friends of the people that liked your page. And we find that to be a particularly powerful way to advertise. It means you don't have a huge community, which costs money to get to, but you do have a community of people that might actually know of you, have heard of you, yeah. but certainly understand someone in the like demographic group that actually does know of you. Yeah, okay. So a question that I get asked, or a, a statement that gets posed to me quite often, is a business that might be B2B, for example. So they have a social media strategy which really revolves around um, LinkedIn and perhaps Twitter. So when we pose Facebook to them, we're generally met with a little bit of a block. So tell us how you would go about posing that as an option to someone when they've got this mental image that Facebook is all about selfies and what you've eaten and you know it's not really positioned for my B2B market. Yeah, we hear it all the time. A lot of people will say, I'm in B2B, Facebook's not, my, my, not for me. The thing about that is, is that, like that a, you could wrap that. Yeah. I could, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, it'd be a bad rap. Yeah. Um, so the thing is that Facebook uh, is is a tool for everybody simply because that is where people are. You know, there's 1.6 billion, whatever the number is lately. Uh, it's always going up, the number of users on Facebook. And the number of time on page is substantial. As Facebook continues to provide quality content, let's hope this is quality and people like it, but uh, the as they continue to do that, then people are going to continue to look at Facebook. Mm. And so... The newsfeed advertisements and the right-hand post advertisements in particular, plus the mobile, you know, they are having the exact same effect as yeah. any other advertising. The difference being, of course, is that people are on Facebook not watching commercial TV. People are on Facebook not necessarily on exactly. the radio. I think we need to get out of this mindset that um, you know work occurs between nine and five, and that's when you think about work. It's not like that anymore. You no. know, people are multitasking. You sit on the couch, you've got your phone in one hand and possibly your laptop on the side yeah. and you're doing two or three things at once. And, you know, we've heard amazing stats that when ads come on on TV, the engagement on handheld yeah, devices yeah. goes through the roof. Yeah, and the other thing about that too is that, you know, you can set up Facebook so that you only get charged per click. Yeah. So if they don't click, so what? Yeah. You don't get charged. And so that's that's a really important thing. And so, uh, but you know, you, you only learn this if you're a brand, if you actually go up there and give it a crack. Well, you, like, yeah, if you're not on it, you're not on it. No, that's right. And so we only know because we tried it. Mm -hmm. And so there's no rule book and there's no, no uh, law that says this is what's going to happen. There's no predictability or insurance policy for that matter. So you just have to give it a try. Now, the cool thing about Facebook by comparison to many other different mediums, such as TV and radio and, and magazine advertising, is it's not overly expensive to actually do that trial. Okay. And for $20, you can actually give it a crack and yeah. see the stats and get a feel for it. And so because of that, the question is, should, any, should businesses be on it? The answer is absolutely. And for no other reason that you have access to the ads manager and the power editor, so you can drill down specifics, which is super important. Okay. I know you're a big fan of remarketing. Yep. You, you love you love yourself a pixel tracker. Yeah, I um, love a good <laughs> pixel track, yeah. Um, those little ads on the side when I'm cruising through my Facebook feed, how, are, how is it that they're following me? Yeah, no, nah, well, it's, it's, it does seem remarkable, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Everywhere you go, you, you get on something and then... Of course, you, you've got remarketing coming yeah. out. So what's happening there is a pixel is uh, tracking your activity. Okay. And so once you go to one web page, then the pixel tracking will mean that Facebook's got a script that triggers it and yep. it remembers that you've been there. And that allows us as advertisers to serve up more ads to you. And so this is a fantastic thing. This is an awesome thing if you're actually trying to get your brand out there. Yeah. So, you know, pixel tracking is one of those things that's really misunderstood, but every single business should be doing pixel tracking. It's a fantastic tool. And it just means that you've got great ability to convert your leads. You know that, uh, you know, it's not often you get a sale from the first ad that people see. Yep. You need the eyeballs to see your ad more and more. And the pixel tracking does that. It's a dream. And, uh, you know, it is the best way to alert your needs. 
I'm a bit of a sucker for nurture leads. Le nurture leads. Nurture leads. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit of a so I I actually try and look at them as a positive and go, oh, thanks for the reminder. I'll just yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There. So totally. It's um using for our, our powers for good and not evil. Exactly. Yeah. And so you know businesses need to be aware of this. It's one of the harder things to set up in Facebook. You've got to have control of your website, yeah. and you've got to have an understanding of the Facebook power editor uh, to actually get the pixel tracking working. And that's why consultants like us uh, exist because we know how to do that and can help you with that. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. We have a cool link above us. Which... It's not there today or here? Oh, no, it's, it's, here. it's right this here. It's the fun part of the show. <laughs> um, and a great blog written by Eve Meyer, one of our team leaders here at the Kingdom. So click on the link and check it out. It goes into a little bit more detail about Facebook, cost per click, paid advertising. And of course, if you do have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And we will be back next Monday. Monday, yeah. So it's four Kingdom sessions Live. a week, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So four... four of these videos per week, uh, you can actually get the whole series. Oh, really? Yeah, on, What's on it? <laughs> wow. It's on our website at www.thekingdom.com.au slash podcast. So you can actually see it in our podcast blog. And uh, so if you really love this and you want to see the back lot, then go for it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be scurrying to them. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for viewing. See ya.